Hello and welcome back to Dream Girl. I'm Sheen, your host, and today we're joined by the amazing Dr. Engineer Suad Al Shamsi. Suad is so, so amazing. She was the first female Emirati aircraft engineer in the UAE, and she's an author, she's an entrepreneur, an innovator, an artist, and most amazingly, my friend. Hello, Suad. How are you today? Hi, Jane. I'm happy that to see you always. It's make me happy, and thank you for having me. Oh, no, we, we were trying to make this happen for so long. I'm glad it's finally happening. <laughs> finally. Yeah. So tell us, how, how's everything been? How's this year been so far? Oh, it's good. It's good. You know, when you are between um, delivering a project, between two kids, mm-hmm. between um, a second edition of my book, it's coming soon, end of this year. It's a crazy day, crazy month. <laughs> but it's good. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying every yeah. second. Okay, well, let's start from the beginning, you know, how, how was that journey to become the first female aircraft engineer? You know, um, people always, when we were discussing about a lot, when we talk with each other, people always judge the woman, mm-hmm. like what you can do or you, what you cannot do. And previously, people always thinking like, as a girl, you should not dream in this thing. And I hear it. To be honest, I'm that type of person. People can tell me what I should dream. And when I was so young, um, people think like I'm a crazy. I have to be a doctor in medical school or in law. And when I told them like, I love to fix, I love mechanical side. The answer always come to you. You are not a boy. And you know, when you think about it, like why is Nothing, any dictionary in the world say what man can do and woman cannot. So we have to stop the fashion designer. We have to stop the makeup artist. Mm-hmm. We need like any man. And, and those that are famous, let's be honest, the famous fashion designer is a man. Yeah. And people copy him from him. So I always answer, give me a dictionary. Even in the school, I remember most of the teacher kicked me from the classes. And one day, the Arabic teacher, she asked me to write an essay, what you want to be in the future. And I wrote, I want to be an aircraft engineer. And, you know, you have like people always in the school, they, they struggle to write uh, one page. And I remember I wrote seven page or eight. And then I was last in the class. I remember <laughs> she gave me two over 20 or 30. I was like, ooh, and I never accept the rejection. Mm. So I went to her and I said, why? I'm a person who asks a lot of why. <laughs> and she said, what why? And I said, why too? And she said, you have, because you write the date and um, title, correct. And because you have a good handwriting. But what you write, it doesn't make sense. And I said, I will make it sense. You are not my mother. You are not the leader. Mm. You are not a god. <laughs> and, and she kicked me from the class she called my mom and she said this girl will be one day in the jail because of her tongue <laughs> <laughs> to be honest it's like it's it's about me it's mm. my dream you have to support me even if you think it's imagination because this imagination can be true today when people remember when people said um, we we'll never will reach the moon Today we reach to the Mars, mm-hmm. not even the moon. It's those imagination make us today where we are. So I was very naughty. I was very crazy. Uh, I, I, I can say it. My mom, she suffered a lot with me through, <laughs> <laughs> through my journey. Yeah. But today she's abroad. She's pushed me so hard. Like whenever, like yesterday, I received a word of the best Emirati mind. Congratulations. Thank you. And... Um, When I show her the trophy, she said, it's not enough. You have to continue. And this is what support we needed from the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot lot of questions there. I think I love the story that you said about how you never accepted any rejection at a young age. And even then you knew what you wanted and you wanted an explanation in return of any rejection. Where do you think that comes from? That courage and bravery to just ask See, if you will see all the children, they have this. Mm. Like, if you will go today, I have two boys, five years old and nine. Mm -hmm. When I ask them, they will ask you why. They will never say, and they will answer, no, (laughs) never. Can you ask any child anything to do with, they immediately will say yes, Mm. never. 
when you were a child, when your parents, they will ask you something, can you say yes immediately? <laughs> if they will ask you to read this book, you will uh, say, why? Yeah. This is like every child. But the different maybe, I never accept it because I grew up as a youngest in my family. And I saw my mom as a single mother. I, I remembered my father, when he passed away, I was only 10 months, 11 months oh, old. Wow. Okay. And she was so tough in a way, how to survive in your life. So every journey, I remember when I saw her, she go to work. She, she starts working after my father, he passed away. She started completing her education when my father, he passed away. And she was a single mother with four children. She raised two boys. Two girl. Mm -hmm. My sister, she's the first pediatric surgeon in UAE. Sure. My brother, they are first in their career. And I noticed something, and this is what I always say, the parents, it's actually your mirror in your life. That because she she survived and she's been going through very difficulty, and whenever she entered I was, you know, this child who always behind her when she entered to the kitchen, she entered to the toilet, she entered to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I never leave her alone. And then I remember when I saw her, she's like wiping her tears and put on her makeup to take us out. I noticed that this woman she, behind her, she's so soft and all women behind them, they are soft, but they're strong in outside. And this is what make me always ask till today when I ask something I started with why and and this is what I said the parents is our mirror so if you see the mother or the father they are so weak they are they careless you will see the kids is the same mm -hmm. when they see the the parent they love education they love reading the kids is the same mm -hmm. so it's it's a mirror. I think I took a lot of things from my mom, mm -hmm. what make me I am how I am today. So this is what um, I see myself like I never accepted and it came in, inside me to continue. Even with my kids, I follow how my mom teach us the reading, the sport, um, you have to sleep early. And this is what I think it should continue. So this is what it's, it's I remember myself. Mm. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. I love what you said about women being soft in the back, but having to be strong in the front. Right. And yes. that can be quite hard to do. In your experience, how do you do it? See, all of us mm. don't believe a woman. She's like standing with mm. full makeup, mm. full uh, clothes. And she's she's careless. She's never careless. Mm. We pass her through a lot a daily. Like, let's be honest. Man is one plus one is equal to mm -hmm. When he want to reach from A to Z directly, he never look to right or left. But women, because they handle a lot of things emotionally, physically, uh, the family, the career, she's like overthinking. And I always believe for us, a lot of women today, if you can see her, she's with makeup, she's smiling, but inside her, she's broken, mm. she's hurt, she's um, maybe she's sick. For me, it's always I stand for Suad and stand in a front mirror. Suad, yes, it's a bad day. Maybe you are not well emotionally, physically, maybe overthinking, but no one will wipe your tears except yourself. Even if people, even your kids, even your partner, even your friend, even your family, they care. I don't say they don't care, mm -hmm. but no one will feel you. When, when, let's be honest, when we get hurt, when we are emotionally broken, who, we will go over to our bed with our pillow and only our hand will wipe your, our tears and always will say, oh, you are overacting. Mm. Why you take it to the highest level? Maybe my heart is different than your <laughs> Shein heart. Maybe she can forget about the situation yeah. with a day, one week, but to add maybe take her one year because we are different human. I do believe, for me, I never show my emotion much because I notice whenever I show my emotion, people think, oh, she start acting, drama queen. Mm. You are overreacting. Mm. And no, it's, to be honest, every woman, she has like a bomb inside her. <laughs> don't, don't try to make it explore. Yeah. Don't make it, like, either make her calm, 
other step away. Mm. This is always the advice I said. Don't come to a near a woman. She's hurt mm -hmm. or she's tired because you don't know what when she will start. And if she explore and she's, to be honest, you will never be able to stop her. So I think it's, I teach myself today, bad day, drink your coffee, give a, your, a, yourself a grateful like you are still alive. It's a bad day. You will over it mm -hmm. it's just 24 hours and it will be over because it's just my hand will wipe the tears. Mm. That's so interesting. I've also realized this year that I'm this way when things go wrong or I, I have something that I don't know how to deal with. My first reaction is to cry. And initially I used to think this is weak of me, but I was like, but this is just how I handle things. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And it's okay. <laughs> it's not to be okay. Yeah. Because it's, it's okay to say I'm not fine. It's no harm to say that, okay, today I don't want to move from my sofa or my bed. If I want to cry, I would cry. Who want to say a good word? They are most welcome. Mm -hmm. Your suggestion, keep it for yourself. <laughs> Your opinion, keep it for yourself yeah. because you don't know what is going through mm. inside me. And a lot of women, they hide their tears. They said it's weak. We are a human. Mm. Sometimes we are strong, sometimes we are weak. And even a man, they are weak, mm -hmm. but they don't show. So for me, it just, you want to scream, scream. <laughs> you want to go under the, the rain to dance, go. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I feel like I just want to stay in a hotel room mm -hmm. without my cats, without my family. Yeah. Just seriously to have the French fries beside me, watching TV and do nothing. Yeah. And this is, I think, the rechargeable way to say yourself like, yes, I'm not fine. I'm mm -hmm. not okay, but I will be okay. Mm -hmm. Just do what you feel you're comfortable. Mm. In that moment, you just need that to be by yourself yes. and just indulge in yes. what you're feeling. Totally agree, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> I love that. But you know, Swat, for you, I'm always so intrigued because you do so much and you're also a mom of two and you have your family. How do you balance it all? It's hard, I can say, in the beginning, mm. because when when you when I started to be honest in, into this career, um, people they were judging me because of my look, and you know about it. Jane. Like mm. people say, like, oh, you've never been because of your overweight. Mm. You've never been able to speak English. You are so weak. You cannot say one sentence. You are very b bad with the people. And when I started to change. I said, I want to change for sad. So people think like, you will never have a partner. You will never have a children in your life because you will be over overworking. And because of our industry, our timing is different than the normal timing. And I promised myself, as soon as I decided to have the greatest partner in my life, um, I need to respect the timing with him. Yeah. So when I, I brought my both son, I decided like, okay, I have to have a calendar in my wall. I have to remember every single thing. If I miss their match, if I will miss any occasion with them, I need to have another time with them. <laughs> because the children, they always remember what you do for them. So what I do, I share with them my agenda, especially the bigger one, Yusuf, he's nine year old. Like today, for example, I miss his too much. Mm -hmm. And I said, and he said, mommy, why? And I said, because she, Auntie Sheen, she has to do this. Mm -hmm. And we, we mess it many times. Mm -hmm. And this is the only time and I have. And okay, and I show him her picture. Oh. And he said, okay, send my regard. Tell her to, to her wish, best wishes and tell her that I will win. And the time oh. to share with your kids, a lot of leaders, the problem with them, when they enter to their office or their house, they should scream. They want the kids to disappear. You are so annoying. Just come on. This is the only time you spend. So when I share my agenda, they will understand. Even with the youngest, I draw for them like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I will not be lead. As soon as I go back, they will ask you the question, how was your day? But when they don't know what is your agenda, they will never understand. They will think they are, you are careless. Yeah. So this is what how I balance with my life. Like, yes, if I miss an occasion. And always, I have to have a prioritize in my life. Mm -hmm. Family, 
my mother, my sister, like nowadays, a lot of people like, let's be honest, we'll text you on WhatsApp. For me, I have to call them every day morning. Mm -hmm. My brother, both of them, my sister, like even one minute. Wow. To hear the voice is different than you are texting. It is. And when it's coming as a comment, like a regular habit you do mm -hmm. it, one day when you miss it, you will feel like there's something wrong. Exactly. Like why I didn't do it today. Or maybe them, like for me, I call them every day when I'm driving from Dubai to Abu Dhabi for my work. And if one day I miss the timing, my sister will call like, where are you today? <laughs> why you didn't call? Because it's a habit. So I think life balance, it's more habit than it just you put like, I have to balance. It's like, you have to have a habit, what I have to do. And don't forget yourself. Because a lot of women, when they are over, they have a lot of work, they have a lot of things in their life. They forget to have a time between mm -hmm. their self. Mm -hmm. Like, when is it the last time you sit with yourself? Mm -hmm. When you buy a present for yourself for no reason, mm -hmm. go for a spa. So I think this is what I try to do in my life. Before we carry on, just a quick word from our sponsor. This episode has been kindly sponsored by Irony Home, UAE's number one festive decoration and luxury home decor brand. The CEO, Rima, who was also a guest on the podcast, has spent years curating the perfect assortment of products that will help you create a luxury lived-in look and feel in your space. Rima believes that every item is an opportunity to bring a little bit of luxury into your home. Irony Home helps transform your living space, creating the perfect balance between stylish sophistication and function. The seasonal pop-up store located in Mall of the Emirates inside that concept store on the second floor next to Asuline Books is a magical wonderland they create every year so that the customers can experience Christmas in a new light. It is a truly magical experience so if you are around I strongly suggest to check it out. Relevant links and information will be in the description box below. Thank you Irony Home. Wow well that's so interesting, right? Because I feel like, especially for you, there's the artist, there's the engineer, there's the novelist, there's the mum, <laughs> there's all of it. So it's pretty cool that you, you found a way to do all of this. And I love that you call everyone in the morning. That is actually really nice. I call them. And if it, I, uh, people, they know I hate something called text message or WhatsApp. Anyone <laughs> text me in WhatsApp like, um, hello. Yes, what you want. Yeah. And like, <laughs> or you send voice think, notes. Or I send yeah. voice. And you know why? I, I noticed something when the voice, it's different than reading mm. a text message. Yes, I read books. I write novels. But when it's come to a person, to to send a voice message, it shows how your commitment, how you are care about this person more than just, hello, how you are doing? It's just a text message. Mm -hmm. Because with the technology, with... The life t type, a style, it's became like, I always say we need 24 hours in 24 hours yeah. because of this <laughs> life and so busy in a way sometimes you forget even to eat. Yeah. And I think this is what keep them remember even with my um, kids. If I'm outside the country due to travel, like I send them voice message and you will see a lot. And those things, I think it will remain as a memory more than a just sentence or a text message. Mm -hmm. So I think what you want to be, it's your choice. And this is what can remind me when I, I wrote seven pages, I still I have it, like, it's my dream. Mm. If I want to do it, I will do it. If I want to success on it, I can. But don't tell me you cannot. Mm. And this is very simple. Yeah, and I think like, yeah. I think that's a big mistake a lot of teachers make, which is to tell kids you cannot. But you should support them because you never know how this little support can push them, even if what they want to do is impossible, but they can discover something else. You know, I remember because um, my big son, he cannot breathe properly. He mm. has a second level uh, asthmatic. Okay. And a lot of people like, oh, they, like the first doctor I talked him to, she, she gave him a lot of medicine. And I respect her a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I talk him to another, he give him till today in a medicine. And you know, when, when people look at him, like, oh, because he's a lot of medicine he's taken. Uh, I remember one day he came and he said, mommy, I want to be a basketball player. Mm. And let's be honest, to be a basketball player, 
it's you have to run you have to do it's a hard lot work of, it's hard work mm. and i remember one of the people of um our friend and he she said impossible you cannot be a basketball a ball player and i looked to him i remember still today i said yusuf you will be mm. and he said how i said exercise mm. training if you cannot breathe then you will sit if and slowly slowly and today he completed two years of playing basketball and he had two matches today <laughs> and he had two matches today and even he called me like before i entered like mommy i went i bought uh, four points and like wow well done and this is the time i it's not only like the school the parents like when i receive a lot of messages on social media people still have a doubt with themselves like i want to be something but because the people sort of around me they said no you cannot be i said who are they yeah god he when i i i do believe in god like mm -hmm. okay and to be honest if i want to wear full accessory no one should choose what i'm wearing like i hate when people raise okay this red sorry it doesn't suit you by the way but <laughs> when they said well not suiting you but yeah. you like it yeah B because people will tell you when you do it's not suitable mm -hmm. will throw every single cloth you have with the red color but you love it mm. for What's me the point? i just i eat what i want i wear what i want i dream to be whatever I want in the end when God he give me this name it's a gift to Sa'ad only mm -hmm. when it's a gift to Shane it's a gift to Shane only mm -hmm. anyone you don't have even when they say oh maybe there are 40 people that look like yeah, you yeah. but only in the face yeah. but as a <laughs> soul inside, yeah. it's one soul God he created so this soul can dream whatever so I, I hate for me it just don't come and tell me what I have to do in my life. You have to respect my choice. You have to respect what I decided to be. If you want to support me, you are most welcome. Mm -hmm. If you have a good word, you are most welcome. Negative or bad, even if it's it from my relative, I mm -hmm. block them. Mm. I don't even give them a second chance. <laughs> block. <laughs> It's easy. I know it's hard, tough, <laughs> but seriously, when you block the negative vibes, you block the negative people, you will enjoy your life. I'm sure. So, Sabad, you need to help me here. Yesterday, <laughs> I was having this conversation with my friend where I said that external factors are my main anxiety sources is because, you know, whenever someone says something to bother me or someone is negative. I block. Yeah, but how? Directly. <laughs> And if it's a very close to friend, yeah. just give them first. I not, People always to give people three chances, right? Okay. For me, only two. I yeah. give you the first warning. The second th <laughs> time I say, thank you. I give you a warning, a block. <laughs> if you want to call, you are most welcome. If you want to have dinner, you are most welcome. But I don't want to see any messages from you. I block a lot of people from my life. Oh, wow. And they were so close to friend. I mean, like every day when, when from my childhood, or a, a, a very close, like every single day we talk. Because I decided to be in this career, I decided to do what I'm doing mm -hmm. right now. Because of all these voices, all this negativity, and uh, an external factor, mm. which is it affecting me, and even with, with what I'm wearing, it's like, okay, I promise myself, I give them the first warning, the second time I don't wanna see you. I can talk to you by phone, I can see you, but I don't want to see messages in my phone from mm. you. And you respect what I decided. You are most welcome. You don't respect it. You are most welcome. Yes, I lose some people from my life. And it's, but this is, they don't love you. They and you don't need care. to protect yourself, right? Let's be honest. They don't give you anything in your life. They don't give you a salary. <laughs> they don't <laughs> give you any anything except words. Yeah. And a very negative factor in your life will affect your decision in your life. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, if they have the chance, one chance to be in your place, they will run for it. Yeah. So any negative, very simple. Give them the first warning, second time. What's in this first warning, by the way? What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the first warning, like I say, listen, what you are, for example, when they will say for, uh, for me, Mm -hmm. Like you are doing a lot of things. You are writing. You are 
you are an artist, you never care about, like, you have a family, but you never maybe care about my kids. I was like, so, you're not living in the same house. Mm -hmm. You are not with me 24 hours. Mm -mm. And you are not inside my soul to know what I'm thinking or what I'm doing. So thank you for your negative vibes. But if you will continue like this, you're most welcome in my life, but you will be blocked from all my social media. You will be blocked from my WhatsApp, from my phone. <laughs> Some people think that I'm joking. Oh, my God. And, and the second time when they repeat it, I send them the same message that I sent it previously, the first warning. And I said, I did warn you before. Thank you. Start. Welcome to block. <laughs> and I block them. Yes, ah. some people, they do call apologize, like we don't mean it. And sure. Want. I do respect. Mm. They, they respect my decision. Mm -hmm. But when some people, they were like, go roaming around. Suad, she's like, Brody, she did this. Mm. And I don't care. Mm. Because you you don't know how I'm running from place to place. Mm -mm. Even when we do an art piece, mm -hmm. of, or I write book. I remember one of the novels, it take me three years. Okay, the art piece today. Today I'm working because we have an, in Paris an exhibition, mm -hmm. and each piece it does take from me, and and a lot of hours. Sometimes I don't sure. sleep from two hours. So don't come and judge me, that because I want to be famous, I do this. You don't know why I love my art. Exactly. And and this is as I said, it's reflect the mirror to my kids today. When my son before I come and he he draw a dinosaur skating and I post it in the story. I saw and. And, and he did it from A to Z by himself. And I told him like, wow, you have talent. You are very good in, in drawing. Because he's trying to copy me, he did this. And this is what I said for people. You don't know why I'm doing this in my life. Maybe I want to reflect those things to my kids. Mm. I want them to learn in this life. So for me, in the beginning, it was hard to block people, mm. but now, it's most important, my mental health and my emotion. So you need to respect me. You respect my decision. You respect my life. You want to support, as I mentioned, you're most welcome. Yeah, I feel like we give access too easily to people, to our life. And that's one thing I struggle with is that whenever people start throwing negative comments and once you see it, you see it, right? It's there. <laughs> now it's just circling in my head so i was like i don't i don't know how to and you're right like however close you are to this person at some point if you need to cut them you need to cut them if you need to cut them cut them if you want them to uh to to be away from your life let them be away from your mm. life it's not about it's your life in the end for me it's most important that how i should enjoy the, the 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 age it will never return the day to day when we are saying the morning is over well, today now we are afternoon the mm -hmm. all afternoon will be over mm -hmm. and the second day will come today we are talking about we have two months and a half or three months the the and year will year. be over yeah so if you consider I should care and think about each comment will be wrote each uh, comment will come or who close. I need to enjoy my life to a way when I reach to my oldest, oldest age, God read it for me. Mm -hmm. I did what I love and I enjoy it. So those people, actually, they are enjoying their life. <laughs> so why I should care if they are enjoying and they are just mm. affecting my life? No. No. No, 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 no. no, no. I don't accept it. No. For well, sure. I, that's that's great advice i think everyone should learn from this like yes. just cut people off and also never take advice from people who have never walked in your shoes no. because they don't want you to be walking the path that you're walking on and then yes. they try to pull you back and and this is what some people I, it's what make me laugh the trend is coming onto into social media mm -hmm. like a lot of people that are life coach okay with my respect to all of them, when a person will come and talk about marriage life and how success married life, but she's divorced. Mm. Okay, I'm not against it, yeah. but you are not success, otherwise you will never be divorced. When pe when she give you advice how to raise your children and she don't have the children, when she told you about mental health and she never passed through whatever you pass, those people, trust me, don't, don't trust people who said, I'm a life coach. 
if they are not certified or they never been into your shoes. Mm -hmm. So it's the advice, take it. The honest people in your life, your parents. Mm -hmm. Because they see you from the day you're born till the day you will die. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the advice I always go back to my mom. And 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 the, she's the honest person. Your mother and your father, the most honest people in your life. Even if they will tell you that's suitable for you, they know because they know your skin color, they know what you <laughs> like and you know. But other than this, don't trust anyone. Mm. Even your kids, because your kids maybe say, Oh, it's very nice and blah blah and but they just try to make it good way to not upset you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't take advice except if you are a specialist, mm -hmm. either in the career, either yeah. in the art, either in um, novels, either even in life. If you pass through things that I pass through it, yes, great, I can learn from you. But those are trends coming like life coach no. mm -mm. never. Mm -mm. I agree. Oh my goodness, you're right. Like everyone is very keen to give advice and tell you, oh, do this or don't do that. This is bad for you. But then it's like, are they going to take responsibility if I do something that they've told me to do and it doesn't work out? They'll did disappear they like this. Did they do it actually? <laughs> like, oh, you know, when people will tell you, you have to own this car, it's so nice. Okay, do you own it? No, <laughs> they are owning the best car. Yeah. If they will tell you, for example, Oh, you have to have this and you do this way. Okay, can you do it? No, it doesn't suitable for me. <laughs> doesn't suit me. Okay, it doesn't suit you. How to, do you know that it will suit me? So this is the way like, why you give an advice? Mm. Just, I always believe like, give a good word, mm -hmm. good advice and say, it can be, try it. Yeah. But don't say you have to do it. Mm. Like I can tell you like, okay, why about, uh, for example, Try to do your makeup in this different way. Yeah. Maybe it will, your eyes will be good. Or maybe, for example, if you are writing novels about realistic life or true story, mm -hmm. why don't you try about another things happening in the moon or mm. this thing? Okay, try it. Yeah. But don't say do it. Yes. It's big, big difference between try and do. Mm. Yeah, because you're suggesting rather than yes. saying I know better. Yes. Yeah. And everyone wants to say, like, I'm better than you. And they are not. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. Trust me. <laughs> well, you mentioned um, authors. Tell us about your book, because I love your, <laughs> the idea of your book, and I'm waiting for the English version to come out. So tell us. To be honest, I'm a crazy about more writing and reading. I'm very bad with cinema, movies, mm. TV. Um, I hate to see it. I don't know why. Maybe people will say, okay, reading is boring. But <laughs> I think this is the time you are freezing your brain and, and thinking like, yes, I'm, I'm into there. But when I start writing, I remember um, I start writing in Arabic and then people ask me to translate it to English. And always my writing is the voice of the man, maybe because I all my study it was with men. Mm -hmm. All what I'm working is a man. All in my life, they are yeah. man, to be honest. And always we believe like, man, they are careless, man, they are having a lot. If you will sit with a group of women, they always complain about their partner, mm. their uh, father, their uh, brothers. They, they complain about the, 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 the next, the second gender. They will never complain about women. So I decided, okay, I have this talent. Why I don't use it? So when I publish my book, it's how to kill your man with no evidence. And um, I remember it's being sold out 28,000 in Arabic. And now they translate it to English. And people ask me for the second edition. And I noticed something like worldwide, all the messages I receive it is like, you're talking about my story, either man or woman, because mm -hmm. it's in the book, in the novel, it's the story about both sides, both mm. gender. So the voice of the man and the voice of the woman, but mm -hmm. it's more how to deliver the man voice. Yeah. So when I receive, like till yesterday, I keep receiving messages. I keep receiving many things about this is my story. And when you think about not only in UAE, not only in an Arab country, it's like other people from other country, they are having the same story. And there you stop between yourself as a writer and think about it. If this is a story, and I, I, I publish only uh, 12 stories, 
it was totally of about 24, 25 story, mm-hmm. but because we don't want it to make it a huge book, so we did it only a 12 story. Mm-hmm. So when you thought about it, like in common sense, we are similar to each other, but different nationality, mm-hmm. different religion. So here I, I decided like, okay, the second edition. And when I decided from two years, because the book almost now it's five years been published. When we said we'll do the second edition of How you kill, to Kill Your Man with No Evidence, and I just put in social media like the second edition coming, more than 11,000 email messages, wow. people, they have a story to tell to the other, mm. either woman she want to understand the man or the opposite. And here you stop like, how you help the other in a way, maybe the, your story it can help other. And here where I say a story is telling is different than just writing a book, telling them what you need to do. So here it's the idea of my book. Mm-hmm. Where, where did the inspiration come from for that title? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when uh, we decided to publish the book, we, we never thought what is the title. So I just passed a message like, as a woman, what is the biggest <laughs> dream in your life? And especially as you are a, a partner or, or you have a man in your life. Mm. And they are, I say it in Arabic, it's like, I wish I can kill my man. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I put different, like, um, I remember I put, uh, I wish to kill my man. Or uh, I remembered uh, to to understand the man. I put different title, and I remember eighty three percent they chose. I wish I took a man. Obviously. How to kill your man with no evidence? Mm. And it's to be honest, at the wish of a lot of women. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> really <laughs> resonated very well with everyone. <laughs> if you will ask a lot of your followers, I think they will agree. I'm sure they will uh, agree. Not only a partner, maybe the father, maybe Just the any brother, man any somewhere. man in their life, yeah. colleague, <laughs> the manager, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So um, now that we're talking about, you know, the men in our lives, um, you obviously have a very high powered role career and you have so much going on the side but you still manage to find a good husband that you've founded a family with what advice do you have for other young women who because I'm sure you know a lot of young women are now struggling to find the right partner including me so what advice do you have for us two advice wait for it Mm -hmm. because when you are thinking about oh I'm, I'm I'm becoming old you are not old uh, people, I cannot find the man. If he's not the right man, you will suffer. A lot of women, especially the young women, mm. they want to get married because they want to get married. They want this title of marriage. Marriage, it's more, it's a company. It's a relation. It's mm. For me, it's more, not a small calibration. It's agreement to continue to end of your life. So to find the right man, it's not about, oh, today I need to go to this coffee shop to find the right man, <laughs> or I need to go to this place. I think the right man or the right woman, I will say to, from opposite side, the time when it's come will come, and you will know that this is the right man in your life. Because if you th- overthink about it, and you notice something in, in our life, when we keep thinking about something a lot, it's the toughest way we got it. Yeah. Right? It doesn't happen. Yeah. It's always happened, not only in a relationship. <laughs> like if you want, for example, to buy something in your mm. life. And I keep remember it and thinking about it. And I want this and I want this. I want this. Even in your study, when you say, I want to bring highest mark. I mm-hmm. want to finish my master's degree. I want to finish my bachelor or PhD. You struggle. Mm-hmm. And I think it's more tested from God to show you like how how hard you want this thing. Yeah. But when you don't think about it, when it's come, will come. Suddenly it will stand in front of your face. Mm. Either you will get the highest mark, either you get the right person, mm-hmm. either you, you succeed in your business. So for me, always when I said about marriage, it's an agreement, it's a collaboration, 
it's a life. When I say the partner, I don't say, I don't like the word of wife and husband, to be honest. Why I said partner? Because as a partner, you succeed together or you're a brick together mm -hmm. and a crush together. So when it's come, first of all, the first advice, don't think about it. Mm. Always say to yourself, when it's come, it will come. I have two hands, I have two legs, I'm healthy, I'm pretty. Age is just a number. Mm -hmm. Don't think of, oh, I became old. Age, it's just a number. Like, so the, see the celebrity. If we saw them in the social media, they're just getting married and they are old without naming a lot of them. Yeah. You say, okay, wow, how? Mm. They are over 50, they are over. Mm. But they got married, they are happy. So we clap for them. Mm -hmm. But between ourselves, like, oh, I became old. And if you ask how old is she, she's 28, 29, like... <laughs> You didn't ever reach the 50, lady, grow up. <laughs> so I think, don't think about it. Say for yourself, when it's come, it's come, and I want the right person. Mm -hmm. And when you find the right person, be honest. I hate those ladies when they are overacting to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You are not perfect. None of us perfect. No. Be b without makeup in front of him. Mm. Show him when you are sick. Show him when you are bad mood, good mood. Show them how you are so romantic, how you are so dramatic. Mm -hmm. And and show them that this is real you. Because the man sometimes will come for you when will show off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes with the slippers, sometimes with shorts, sometimes so handsome, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, with suits, sometimes it's been mm -hmm. how he come to you. He never care about, oh, he was stand, maybe beginning of your relation, he was standing in front of the mirror to do his yeah. hair. And, <laughs> but after m couples, month mm -hmm. the first year of marriage he will be so normal mm -hmm. in front of you and this is what i said be honest with your man and always have this agreement between you and him like why i said partner like can we talk as a friend and here you turn actually the conversation that you want to be more honest because between us as a friend you can say oh i'm tired mm -hmm. i'm struggle i'm thinking about this idea without feeling like I'm not talking to my husband or my partner. So remember when you find the right person, you are finding a partner, mm -hmm. not a husband, mm -hmm. because he will be your father, he will be your brother, he will be your colleague, he will be your friend, your kids, he will be your life. So I give them those two advice. And don't wait, just continue your life. If he come between, he's most welcome. Mm -hmm. If not, nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. It's just not being written for you to be. Uh, a married. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. <laughs> this is, you you have know. everything in your life. Mm. It's more, it's adding something to your life. It's not to complete it. Exactly. Because a lot of women thinking like, when I find the man, he's completing. No, mm. your life is completed. Yeah. You have your education, you have your career, you have your business, you have Mm -hmm. every single thing and all the other relationships in your and life and the good relationships mm. so if he is he's a good value mm. to help me and support as a partner not to complete me agreed 100 percent. well i have a final question for you to add what does success mean to you now this is a question when every time they ask me i always answer where i reach right now and everything and to be honest, today I will answer different. How I feel relieved, happy, enjoying every single second of my life. Um, success, it's not only to have a career or you have the highest degree or having only family or friends. It's how you wake up early in the morning and say, I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I'm happy. And the most important that your mind and your heart, they are so secure, they are so happy, and you feel like nothing can change the smile from your face. This is a success in, in definition, I can say. And today I am grateful that I feel relieved, happy, and comfortable. So this is the success that the human should define their their um, successful life. I love that. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Is there any final words you'd like to share with us? 
maybe one quote I always say it for every yes. single woman. If you can dream it, you can do it and achieve it with big smile. Don't let people define your dream. Don't let people judge you because who you are. God created one soul and this soul is very unique. So be happy with your soul and enjoy it and reach your dream and enjoy it. I don't want to add anything to this. This was beautiful. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you, much, Shua. This Thank was you. amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks. And it's hopefully my pleasure. we'll see you next time. Definitely. Thank you, Jean. <laughs>